I'm Mike Zima from Mallorca, and on today's episode of Getting to the Top, we're going to interview a client. Arona Martin is reinventing the way people love each other, and she's also reinventing the way we give gifts to cancer. Tune into this episode and find out how she got to the top, and along the way, she meets some incredible people and ends up in Hong Kong to make her journal come true. Hi, it's Mike Zima, and I'm here with Arona Martin, and I wanted to start the new year off with a new podcast and also a discussion around how are small businesses helping influence decisions and impact that not only change people's lives, but also enrich their lives with meaningful products and also meaningful causes. So I just wanted uh, you to just briefly introduce uh, It's Because Love. Yeah, so... Um... Because Love is a gift product company that I created after my best friend was diagnosed with cancer. I kind of, after the diagnosis, didn't know what to do or what to give her or how I could support her. And when I searched online, there was no real options available. This was about five or six years ago. So I ended up making a product for her. And now I sell them to help other people have something to gift when they don't know what to say. And that, that's really important about not knowing what to say, because uh, I've been I've been touched with uh, cancer. You know, I have people uh, dealing with it right now as we speak, going through treatment. And yeah. it's something that it's something that touches all of us. Right. Um, right. One of the, one of the interesting things that uh, you brought up in our in your discussions where we started to help you with your ads and help you fulfill and launch, at least take those first meaningful steps into a new marketing direction was that what you're trying to achieve is essentially doing support of the support group uh yes. a, a, a lot a lot of these people you know uh, are impacted uh, indirectly because they're, they're their loved ones so talk a little bit about like where do you think the opportunity is uh, with the support yeah that's actually really good that you brought that up so there's a lot out there for the cancer patients themselves mm-hmm. tons of info tons of support groups you know different um organizations, but there isn't a lot for us, the friends and family and the loved mm-hmm. ones. Like what do we do when someone we love gets cancer? First, I want to say when someone we love gets cancer, it feels like we have cancer too. Yeah. So immediately like right there, totally get it. But there aren't tools or even a place to go where, what, what do you say? What do you not say? Which right. is a big thing, you know, and how do you support someone? So I'm trying to create products, but also like a niche where I'm supporting the supporters. So it's definitely needed out there. Um, And yeah, all of my gifts, all of my products are gifts only. I have, I do have some cancer patients that have bought them for themselves, Mm -hmm. but mostly I'm geared towards like helping people love others well. No, and, and that's that's impactful. It's 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 the motion that goes into it. It's it's not it's not one of those you know like I I don't want to go off on a tangent and call it like a hallmark thing just because, uh you know we have people that are dealing with this that you know we have to look at it a certain way. And what I mean is you know the first time I was impacted by somebody that had cancer, uh you don't know what to say. You you don't know what to feel and. I was 18 when, when my friend, um, you know, who's no longer with us was affected by it. And essentially like to me, it felt like I still have my friend, I'm still connecting with this person, but you know, it just starts chipping away and eating at you. And I, I, if I had at least some more insights that, you know, there's a certain, there's a certain way how I should approach my, my friend, like he's no longer active. Uh, it's, you know, I had none of that advice. You know, I just had firsthand experience. Right. And it's also, when I talk about like supporting the supporters, you're going through a lot too, because even though the person has cancer, has cancer and they're dealing, dealing with it, you're dealing it with from the other side. And there's a lot of like emotional stress and what to do and feeling helpless. And you can't talk about it necessarily with that person because they're the ones actually dealing with the disease. So you're not really going through One of the things with the Love Heals journal that I created that I think is great is when I was making it, it was really good for me. Mm -hmm. It was cathartic for me Mm -hmm. to put my heart and my emotions into this book and then give it to her. And a lot of emails that I get from customers are, is they say um, that it's so helpful for them because we never, I mean, I can assume as men, you don't do this a lot, but even as women, we never sit down and say to our friends, like what we love about them, why we love them, why we like them in our lives. And that's kind of what this journal does as a gift. Mm -hmm. So it helps you express 
everything that you're going through and also like build a bridge of conversation to everything that they're going through. Yeah, it's it's also it's a very personal like in this digital world writing and, and, yeah. and just kind yeah. of, like the texture of the paper it, it is really emotional because you, you really are you know just going in there and you're conceiving of the, the most purest thoughts that you have and the excitement and, and the happiness and you, yeah we don't we don't appreciate each other because it goes without saying if, if we didn't like each other we wouldn't keep each, our friends around right uh, exactly so I, I want to rewind a little bit uh into the past i know you've been doing this for a while so uh, when did you, like when did you start let's just start with like the beginning of the timeline Okay, so I started about four or five years ago. But technically, I've been doing it for what feels like forever, right. but my store just launched. So four or five years ago, when my friend Jessica got cancer, I didn't know what to do, like I said before. So I bought her a journal. I kind of hand-lettered some pages, made some journal prompts. I have an art therapy background, so I kind of put some of that into it. And it was yeah. just a way for me to tell her I loved her and also give her somewhere to like let her feelings out. She loved it. Um, she took it down. She actually went to Houston to go, you know, see what she could find there. It's a hospital. And while she was there, she'd be sitting in the waiting rooms writing in it. And I decorated it and had stickers and glitter and all this stuff. And it was, it's like a range of emotions within the journal. So there are pages for when you, you, you know, want to get the anger out. There are exercises for when you're really scared. There are um, funny pages. There's a doodle your doctor's page for when you're just sitting in a waiting room. Cause there's a lot of waiting when it comes with mm -hmm. cancer. So while she was writing it, women would come up to her and say, what is that? That's such a beautiful book. Where did you get it? She's like, oh, my friend made it for, for me. So she would call me and my heart would just break for these women that they needed a place to also write and journal. So I started just making some on the side and sending them to Jessica. And I just said, carry them around in your bag. And if someone asks you, just give them to them. Yeah. Give one. Wow. Yeah. So that's kind of like how the idea started. And while I was making it, I really felt prompted like, this could be something that people in the world need. Mm -hmm. But then I kind of just put the idea aside. So, um, what, so what happened when you put that idea aside? Like anything, like I just want to just walk through like, when, you know, when you put it down, like what happened? Um, well, I'm an event designer mm -hmm. as my career. I have my own business. I'm an event designer. I do big ticket corporate events all over the world. So I was just concentrating on that. And I didn't know anything about the product business mm -hmm. or the book business. So I'd say, oh, this is a cool idea. Someone should bring it to market. Right. It was always what I would think in my mind, right. like, oh, someone should do that. Um, so that's kind of how it's happened, where I would just put it down and be like, that's a great idea. Maybe someone would create that one day. So when did the trail start getting warm again when you picked it back up? So the trail got started getting warm again. Jessica went into remission. Mm -hmm. She's like, look, you've got to do this idea. It's so awesome. These women love this thing. And I, and I had been thinking about it for a while. It was, it's like one of those things where it's just kind of in your mind and you're like, what about that? What about that? But it really got warm where a friend of mine was going to like a business conference uh -huh. and she said, oh, why don't you come with me? I didn't have anything to do that day. And I was like, sure. And I had like one that I had, like a tattered one that I had made that I'd never given anyone just kind of sitting on my bookshelf. Uh -huh. And for whatever reason, as I was walking out the door, I put it in my bag and I thought maybe there'll be someone at this women's conference thing. They could tell me if they think this is a good idea. I hadn't even picked it up in a year. Mm -hmm. So I just threw it in my bag and I went. It turns out that um, three women on the panel were funded on the show Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. And right after they were done speaking or whatever, I just, I don't know. I just was like so bold and walked up to them and was like, hi, I have this journal. Can you help me? Do you think it's a good idea? And all three women were like, yes, this is amazing. You have to, you have to pursue it. Let us know how you can help. I'm still in touch with them. Because that, that's, a, that's a good contrast because at first you're, you're saying like, oh, someone has to bring this to market. And that's really just the entrepreneur inside of you going up to the ledge and you, you can just see how far that cliff goes down. And, right. and then that bold step is when you just jumped in. So that really was the breaking point. Uh, how long ago was that? That was about four years ago, probably. Wow. So, so walk me through some of the, the milestones that got you to like r really close to launching this, like just before you actually had the product in your hand. So um, one of the milestones is I then made like thinking I could sell this idea to a bigger company because I don't know anything about it. So I was like, okay, 
I don't know, maybe I can license it. Mm-hmm. And that will be my little entrepreneur side thing. So mm-hmm. I created a pitch deck, sent it off. I had just looked on LinkedIn, found someone over at a very big um, greeting card company, sent them a letter with some photos. This is my idea. Do you want to like partner with me? We can do it together. I thought if I got a big backer, it would be good. Uh-huh. And got an email back. And within a week, I was signed in a licensing deal with them. Wow. Wow. Talk about proof of concept. I'm in the money. This is great. I'm an entrepreneur, but I have this whole big company helping me develop something, Mm -hmm. which is what was in my mind. Right. Which isn't actually true. (laughs) Right. Right. Because there's like, we all struggle it with entrepreneurs because we're forced to learn every single part of the business, like literally from A A to Z. Uh, And just, you know, dealing with those kinds of businesses, you definitely have a lot of buy-in into it, but having someone alongside you to take it to the next level is important. And what happened with that licensing deal? Like you're, you're just ecstatic. You're elated. You're on cloud nine. What, what happens next? So what happens next is about 15 to 18 months later, they went through a reorg. They still hadn't developed it. It was a perfect example of how great ideas get eaten up and then lost, like in the red tape of the corporate world. Because all the time they were like, this is great. We're going to do it. But there's no market for cancer gifts. I'm like, yes, I know. Let's create a market. We're going to be trailblazers. We're going to be the first people out there. And they're like, mm, yeah, I don't know. We're a little nervous. That's not really what we do. Nah, 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 nah. So the whole time I was like, well, I, should be, I could have been going and going on my own. Why was I so insecure that I didn't think I could do it on my own? I needed some, you know, big people to help me when actually they were hindering me. Right. So I went, I got a lawyer, got out of the contract, and I was like, thanks for nothing. Bye. And um, the next milestone was, so I went to like a little bit of like a depression as all entrepreneurs go. The up and downs yep. are entrepreneurship are horrendous. Yep. So I was a little low. Um, I didn't think I could do it on my own. Jessica got really sick, right, kind of in the middle of this whole thing. So I was dealing with that. And I got an email from like a friend of a friend that I had met months before. And she just said, Hey, I'm having some people over. Do you want to come tonight? And I was exhausted and I didn't want to go. And then something inside me was like, you need to go there. Mm -hmm. There might be something. You might meet someone that can help you. Yeah. It's it's that drive. Yes. Yes. So I went on shower, like a baseball hat on. I was like, I don't care. I'm going to go. And, um, it turns out I sat down with this girl and right at the end, we talked about everything. I didn't even talk about anything about my business or my idea or anything. Right at the end, she said, so what, like, are you working on? Do you have any cool things that you're doing? And I told her a little bit about my journal, the Love Heals journal that I wanted to um, create. And I said, she said, what do you need from me? And I was like, do you know anyone who knows about paper or gift products? That's what I need. I need someone who knows about like how to produce a gift product. Cause at first for months, I thought I was publishing a book. Mm-hmm. So I went down that rabbit trail. It wasn't a book. It was actually a gift product. Mm-hmm. And she said, I know one person I went to high school with her, which was 20 years ago, by the way. And I said, if you send her a message, see if I'll meet her. She lived about two and a half hours away in Wisconsin. Uh-huh. So she sent her a message that night and the woman replied and said, sure, I'll have lunch with her. So the next morning I got in the car and I drove the three hours to go meet this woman. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, I was like, I'm doing this. This is my one lead. So, so, you know how- so the night before you're just, you know, casually, you just, it, it comes up and you say like, why not? I'll just, you know, it, it's a good conversation. And now you're in a car driving to Wisconsin. Yes. So I'm like, I've got to go meet this lady. I have no idea who she is. We hadn't even spoken on the phone. So I go meet her Wow! and I pull the book out and I just say, I created this thing and I kind of want to try to sell it, but I don't know how, can you like, do you know anything about this? She took one look at it, totally started tearing up. And she said, this is so needed and I'm going to help you. I'm going to put you in touch with someone. Hmm. He used to be this man named Joe, who's like, my angel in my life used to be in the paper business and product business. So maybe he'll mentor you a little bit. Mm. So I was like, okay, great. So the three of us got on a call, like a couple days later, he was wonderful. And he said, and I had in the middle of all this, I had already kind of like explored, do you make it in the U S I'd love to make it in the U S mm-hmm. but it's expensive. Like where do you make it? So mm-hmm. in, in my discussions with Joe, he said, I got to tell you, you might have to go to China. Mm-hmm. 
I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I know some manufacturers there. You need to go there. And I was like, well, I'm not going by myself. How about you go there with me? This is a man I've never met in person before. He lives in Kansas City. So was this I'm on your tra- first call that you're talking? This was on, no, this was on like the third or fourth call. Okay. Literally the third or fourth call. Okay. So how long did that, how long did that conversation go on until the decision is you have to get on the plane with Joe? <laughs> um, it, it was, it was how you get this done. You have to meet these people. Uh-huh. You know, it's it's hard to communicate with China. I'm not a designer. Lots of people produce stuff and have it developed in China and manufactured there from here. People never go there. Right. But because this was just such like a weird idea and I didn't really have an exact product and what it could look like, Joe said, you could do it here. It'll take you years to develop it. But you go there, you're going to speed up the process. Mm-hmm. And so I said, okay, will you go with me? And he said, sure, but I only fly business. Ha, <laughs> the ask. <laughs> I was like, okay. So I bought him a ticket uh-huh. within two weeks. Within two weeks. Wow. And um, I, I, he flew from Kansas City. I flew from Chicago. And we actually met in person for the first time in the Hong Kong airport. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty bold. But it was the best. It was the best. So that, he took that, me all that around. That is just, you know. Like, <laughs> along the way there definitely are people that help each other and you know pay it forward because they just they have the knowledge and, and it's it's really important and it's, it's great to see uh his legacy really come in to to, yeah. you, to your world and, and just really take that and help you move this product along further so okay a lot of time has passed you're in hong kong with joe and i've heard bits and pieces of the story but i'm curious about wh- what was it like in, in hong kong those you know i don't know how long did you spend there like just talk to me about what what your day days there were like so i think i was there like five days maybe four days specifically we landed we um were in hong kong we landed at night we had dinner we kind of got to know each other in person mm-hmm. And then the next morning we woke up and um, it was a couple years ago, but I think we took the chi- the train mm-hmm. then into China to where, uh, into Guangzhou, mm-hmm. where there were some manufacturers that he knew and worked with. Mm. So we were going into places that he was familiar with and had appointments with. Right. And it was... Well, uh, first of all, Hong Kong is the most amazing. It's now my favorite city in the world. It is um, so metropolitan. It's international. It's also on the water. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's the hustle and bustle. It's like New York times 10, but more glamorous. Yes. But when you took the train, so you took the train and then you went in to China, it was like 100% stark difference. Everything is very muted, the colors, grays. It's very poor where we were, dirty, filthy. It was, to me, awesome. So we went in, we met with a couple of manufacturers. I showed them kind of like my prototype that I had and discussed about how to make it done, what, how to make it, could, could they do it? They were, some of them were like trading companies where they're the hub and then they go to a paper company. They go to a velvet manufacturer that can do the outside of the journal. They connect you with a sticker company because I have a lot of components in this one product. Mm, That's interesting. Just a lot of different suppliers have to come through these channels to really just fulfill your particular journal, right? That's interesting. Exactly. Uh, You You can choose to do it yourself, but sometimes it's better if you have a trusted Um, trading company. The downside is a lot of entrepreneurs that I know now in like groups and stuff that I'm a part of is it's not, it's not always the best to work with companies that don't know you. If you have a good idea, they're off selling your idea to five other um, entrepreneurs. And all of a sudden you create something and five other people are selling it now because the laws aren't covering the fact that it's your property yeah yeah i we've we've worked with intellectual property lawyers out of hong kong and it's really important to have the same sort of protection in china yeah yeah well you know this applies to whether it's a design uh whether it's a product Uh, so intellectual property you know it's you have to go through the chinese system in order to protect your idea and even then you know you have then you have to enforce it right so right. It, it can be really difficult to entrepreneurs that are probably making, uh, you know, pr- you know, consumer products and things like that. But of course, you know, why not? It's like 
you're the you're the MVP, right? It's working for you, so it's going to work for somebody else. Uh, yeah. But you know, you you can't you can't change shadows, and and people are going to knock off everything. So, uh, what kept what kept you afloat during this phase? Because you said it takes a long time to build a, a product. How quickly can you get it done in China, or how how quickly did that timeline accelerate? So it accelerated about by a year. Mm-hmm. But what really helped me accelerate is I found a designer here in the U.S. that made all the sketches and all the artwork and actually um, sent over the, I guess, their files of exactly how the product, the stickers and everything are going to look. Mm, okay. Because that's a language barrier. So even being there, it was difficult. Right. It's, it's, it's such a different world. Yeah. So we toured, we saw some manufacturers. I was very, very adamant about making sure that there was no child labor in any of the factories that created my products. So I went and visited every single factory, the sticker factory, the journal, the paper printer and everything to make sure about that. Um, and then I came back and then we spent a day, of course, traveling through Hong Kong and taking tours and it was wonderful. So I came back. I then hired a designer who created and drafted all the files that I could send over and that sped up the process. Mm -hmm. I've gone over there one more time and maybe quickened the steps a little more and shaved off a couple months. Uh But, um, you know, being an entrepreneur, specifically when you're creating a product, it's a lot of money out. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm also trying to work my other business. Right. So finally, then about, it took about a year to get everything. So that's, it that, that's, that's, that's awesome. a pretty good, that's a pretty good quote. It, it took a year to get a product. Yeah. It could have been six months if I was better prepared on the front end, but I was 100% learning as I went, even with Joe's help. Uh-huh. It was the, the way we, the way you communicate with the people in China, they speak English, but there's still a language barrier. So we would send files and say, we want this pink and we want this stitched and we want this. And then they would come back and it would be a hundred percent, nothing that we asked for. Mm-hmm. We'd be like a file, but they're interpreting something that we think that, you know, like it's, I'm hoping that they understand this, but they're interpreting it a whole different way. So it was a lot of that. Lots of patients communicating over email, lots of midnight Skype calls, showing them in person over the camera, like exactly what I'm looking for. And I invented a couple things like fabric stickers that have stitching on them. And so it took about a year. I was super excited. I ordered a thousand units mm-hmm. over. It took two months to come over after you pay and you get them. It took two mo- two months to get the product in on the, um, shipped over on the water they ship it freight over on the water yep. product shows up i have a fulfillment company the product shows up they the company opens all the boxes the whole load is damaged oh my god oh yeah so i was devastated plus it took forever so now in my mind as an entrepreneur you're like i'm missing sales i'm missing sales every day that you don't have the product you're losing out. Right. It's be- setting you back every single day. Right. And because of the whole uh, licensing deal with the other company that I had, that was 18 months that I felt like was ripped away from me. So I'm living with this anxiety of when am I even going to be able to sell one? Will this ever happen? All the money I put in, it was not a good experience. I will say that. <laughs> so the product shows up all damaged. Huh. I then drive to Kansas City that Nine hours to drive to Kansas City because at this point, every dollar counts. I don't want to pay for a flight. Go there, look at everything. We then have to talk to China. They have to remake everything because it was the outside of the journal that was damaged, the actual like velvet cover. The glue did something and seeped out. Oh. So you could see the glue on every single one. Mm-hmm. Major breakdown, of course. Joe meets me there. And it's like, it just it was horrible. So now we have to reorder everything. But guess what? Chinese New Year's are here. And China closes down for two months. Two months? Yes. No one tells you Tech- that. <laughs> no one tells you exactly. And no, it's like, I've never seen anything like it. They close down, but then some people don't come back to work. Some factories don't really open after two months. This and that. So it's this random timeline. Sounds, and, it sounds like Spain, but on, on a larger time scale. <laughs> in addition, I'm competing with all the huge companies that are ordering stuff. So my little order means nothing to these companies. They're worried about fulfilling like the big companies that come in and order 50,000 units. Yeah. 
Like every so week, I, they're ordering fifty thousand units. So no one cares about me because I'm just like this girl. So that happens. Now that's another basically six months. You have to add the two months, then you have to add another two months to get it on the water. And everyone just says, I'm really sorry, but there's no recourse. They did pay for the new items because it was their fault. And they also paid for the fulfillment company then had to go through the thousand units and replace all the journal covers with all the books that were inside, all the stickers and everything. So that was a whole another week of work. And uh, late June of 2017 is when I finally got the products and I launched my business. Wow. So <laughs> it was a struggle. No, that's that's a really, really powerful story because when you reached out to me, you, you sent this email. It's like, help, China, I have this product. It was, I, I, I I thought it was just like not going to end well. I was worried about you at first, but I'm glad that it that it worked. Me too. I was, I was glad that it that it worked out. So do you have any big plans uh, for the business in, in 2019? Because uh, I know you're expanding a little bit into into different uh, products or, you know, I, I'm sure you have a vision that we haven't really talked about uh, in detail, but is there anything uh, that you have on your uh, wish list for the year? I... Well, my new um, little thing on the wish list is I'd like to get a segment on one of the shows, HSN or QVC, because mm-hmm. I think my product explaining it on a show like that would be really powerful. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people out there, one thing that happened to me when my friend got cancer is I didn't sleep a lot. Yeah. So I watched a lot of like late night random home shopping network type of shows. Mm-hmm. So I think I could reach the right market through something like that. I'm expanding right now my both of my products. I also have a blanket. It's called the Big Hug. You It comes with, um, it's a lap blanket. It's just a small little lap blanket, kind of like the size of a wheelchair blanket. And it has these holes, pre-knitted holes all around it. It comes with these fabric tags that you could write on, similar to signing someone's cast, like in a broken arm. Mm-hmm. A lot of times. You know, if you're going through chemo and stuff, the rooms are small, the rooms are cold, you want a little comfort from home. So it's a way for us as the friends and family and loved ones to give love to someone and then have it with them all the time. So while the cancer patient, you know, is just like sitting in their therapy bays or whatever, they can have on their lap all the messages of inspiration and love from their friends and family. So that actually has also been selling pretty well outside of the cancer market, just in the care market. For Christmas, it actually did really well as a granny gift because no one ever, no one ever knows what's to get a grandmother. So to have all grandchildren fill out the tags and send this blanket of love to the grandparent, it is um, a really great gift. And I'm expanding a little bit more on care gifts in general. Yeah, I, it's the, the love thing is powerful because it's, it's almost as as the years have went on, they discounted what the real meaning of love is, at least, you know, whether right. it's friendships or just on so many different degrees. Right. It's just such it's such a complex uh, thing to define. Uh, I was going to ask you, um, what was what surprised you about all this or at least something that you think about occasionally that just just really keeps you thinking about it or or you just relive a specific moment of this entire journey all the time? I will tell you the thing that surprised me the most, I don't want to start crying because, because, (laughs) but it's all the emails that I get from customers and from cancer fighters or messages through Instagram about how awesome and how impactful the journal was from the giver and from the receiver. I get emails on the daily of these just heartbreaking stories and women say that they couldn't get through it without the journal because it was the perfect place to pour out their feelings and all the promptings, the page promptings. So that was the most surprising because I didn't realize how personal the business was going to get for me. Mm -hmm. Um, And then every time I feel like entrepreneurship is hard at the end of the day, it's a business. Mm-hmm. So I'm frustrated with that part because I feel like I'm working endlessly and not making any headway. I get an email and then I'm like, oh, that's why I'm doing this. Because I want to help comfort the supporters. Yes. No, and, and well, that, yeah. that, that, you know, there, that has no currency. You can't have any equivalent of, of money for, right. for, for that kind of satisfaction. It's, it's just, it goes without saying, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, I wish there was a way I could do it for free and not have to worry about the business side. Well, that's that's the thought process you need in order for this to blow up. So I, I think you're on the right track. I'm really excited that you had a 
had a moment to to share your story, but let's yeah. let's look forward to big and great things in 2019 and let's let's rock and roll together. Perfect. I agree. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.